Hi everyone, this is Clinton Lofthouse and welcome to photomanipulation.com, the best place on YouTube for creative photo manipulation techniques and tricks, advanced walkthroughs and speed edits. In today's lesson, we will be going over how to create depth in your images in Photoshop. So if you find this video of any value, we would really appreciate it if you would like or share the video and even subscribe to the channel. We would be really, really grateful. Thanks a lot guys and let's get on with the tutorial. So first of all, let's just have a little chat about depth in images. If you look at any kind of art, so paintings, digital art, even photography, the way people get depth in those images is having a background, a middle ground and a foreground. So in photography, because you have a lens what can create shallow depth of fields, you can easily create depth with those. But when you're using, when you're creating photo manipulations, it's a little bit difficult. Well, it's not actually difficult, it's just not as easy as just pressing a button. But what you need to do is focus, make sure you have a background, a middle and a foreground. And we have to add them in ourselves. So if you look in this image here, in the background we have this sky and this uh, skull mountain sort of thing. And then all the action is at, is happening in the middle plane here. And then in the foreground plane we have this uh, wave what looks like it's hitting if there was a lens hitting the lens and coming up the lens and you can see just a little bit underneath the water. So having all these three planes together creates depth and we also create depth because this foreground is actually a little bit blur and the background is a little bit blurrer as well and the foreground uh, sorry the middle ground is very sharp. So that creates the sense of depth. So basically when you create an image you need to not only think about what's happening in the middle where most of the action is, you need to think about what will be in the background and what will be in the foreground. And if you can have these three planes together, what work in harmony, then you'll be able to create depth in your photo manipulations. So let's go a little bit deeper into this and let's go into an image that I created a long time ago. So this was an image called Bad Santa. So as create the background of, of various stocks or this part of the sky here and this little village here and all these trees were probably maybe three four different images and then obviously we've got the middle ground here where our bad Santa is and the blood trail coming down his, with his bag and there was, I was getting to this point I was just thinking something seems to be missing so what is it and eventually after a little bit of an introspective moment and I think I decided well there's, a, there's no foreground element the bag and Santa are quite close to the lens, but still we can maybe put something in that foreground. So what I did was I added some trees in, like so. And now it completely changes how you look at the image. Not only does it add a foreground element and create depth, it also adds a little bit of story to the image. So maybe maybe some unsuspecting um, hiker or walker was walking through trees and when they look through the leaves, this is the scene that they saw. So it's also adding a little bit of that story. But let's have another look at the image without the trees. And then with. And this was very easy. I basically just cut out some of the um, leaves or branches from these trees in the background. Brought them to the, to the front, enlarged them and then added a Gaussian blur. And it just created that depth. So if you do have something in the foreground, you do want to blur it. As in when you take photos with a shallow depth of field, every, something what's really close to the foreground is always blurred out. So you need to try and imitate that in your own photo manipulations. So let's move on to our final image. So what I'm going to do in this is I'm going to show you how to easily create depth by just blurring something in the foreground. So in this image uh, is an image I did for Liam Payne. He's uh, Connor Butler, who is Liam's photographer, sent me the image and they wanted an artwork created around this image. So I got to this point here where I had Liam jumping in the in the air, 300 style, with in his gladiator outfit, and then I'd created this stadium, gladiator kind of stadium in the background. And again, we just needed some kind of foreground element. So I had a little think and I thought well, it'd be cool if maybe I had a warrior's hands but close to the screen where it looked like Liam had felled the warrior and now he was jumping in the air to put in the final blow. So let's go and get the hand. So I found this hand image online which is a stock image. 
So all I did was I cut it out and I brought it into the image here and then I placed it into the scene. So you need to make sure it's somewhere at, at the top of the, the sky layer, this um, stadium layer and then also on top of the lean layer, which it is. So we can now have it in the foreground. So with the move tool, I would then just move it along and then with control T, which is free transform, I then just started playing around and placing the image of the hands where I wanted it. So obviously the hand's going to be close to the lens or the, the pretend lens. So let's put it somewhere around here and then maybe make it a little bit bigger. As you can see, I did a very rough cut out of this uh, hand. So let's just get rid of this little white bit here. So again, just painting with a brush now, set to black. I'm just going to paint away this area here. Make sure we have the layer mask selected. Make sure your brush is set to white. Let's just paint away this little area here. So again, this is just for the purpose of the tutorial. So now we've got the hand like that. What we want to do is obviously there's a few things at the minute. The hand is too bright. It doesn't fit into the scene. It's too saturated, which also doesn't fit into the scene. And it's not blurred, so it's not creating that depth we want. So first of all, what we need to do is we need to create the right amount of light and dark. So we want it darker. So let's create a curves adjustment. Let's hold down Alt and clip that curves adjustment to the hand. And then we can get the curves dialog to pop up. And then we all we have to do then is we, if we just grab the square here and pull down, it's just pulling down the highlights. So let's match the darkness somewhere like here. And because it's in the foreground, it would probably be a little bit darker as well. So we ha now have a dark hand, but we also want to desaturate it a little bit. So maybe um, what we want to do is create a hue saturation adjustment layer because I placed it under this uh, curves adjustment layer that's already clipped to it. It automatically clips the hue saturation adjustment layer to this hand. So let's just pull down the saturation a little bit and then let's go to master click on reds and then pull down the um, saturation of the blood as well. So something along those lines. So it's still looking like it could be a little bit too bright. So let's go back to the curves. Let's just pull down the middle of this line here. Somewhere like there. Bring this down. So now it's kind of matching the right darks, but we've got a lot of blues in this image. So maybe we just need to add a little bit of blue into these hands to make it match. So let's go and create another, another curves adjustment layer and let's go into the color curves and let's just go to the blue and let's just pull this to the left and that should add a little bit of blue to the hand. And then if we go to the red here, we pull that to the right, like so. So the colors are now matching a little bit better as well. So let's just turn that off and that's on. turn that off so that's the brightness that's looking good so let's turn the saturation again i think we're matching okay with the saturation so what we can do now is we can make it a little bit darker but then it might blend too much into the scene but let's let's have a try so let's just use this one here and let's just pull down the highlights a bit more somewhere around here now you can still kind of make out it's a hand let's just pull it up a little bit to be safe so we now have colour matched and matched the tone of the image with curves adjustments and hue saturation. What we want to do now to make it really blend into the image and create depth is just, just to blur the image. So what you want to do is go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and let's blur this because it's going to be close to the lens so it would be quite blurred out. So let's try 26 point 27, somewhere along here, press OK. Now, can you see how much depth of field this creates already? Because it looks like the hand is coming up close to the where the lens would have been. And now we have the middle ground where Liam is and we've got the background of the stadium. It creates that depth in the image that we wanted. So we could even, let's try grabbing the move tool or pressing V for the move tool. Let's just move the hand a little bit. So it might not be in the right position where you want it, but let's pull somewhere around here. Liam's eyes are going somewhere here, so this hand could actually be here and close to the lens. 
so that works for me. So there you go, with a couple of simple steps just matching colours and tones and the main step which was blurring and bringing something closer to the lens by making it bigger, we have created depth in a image. So let's just run through. So we, I showed you this image where we have the water hitting the lens here and the background here and our focus plane which is the centre with all this action happening. I then showed you this bad Santa image where we created depth by adding in just the foreground element of the branches of these trees and then finally in this image just by bringing this hand into the foreground we have three planes of focus hence creating depth in our image. So thanks a lot guys, I hope you found some value in this tutorial. If you did, it would be awesome if you could like or share or even subscribe to the channel. We would truly appreciate it. So thanks a lot guys and I will see you next time.